Hey. So, not much here, just chilling. Do you guys like movies based on Shakespeare plays? You know, movies like 10 Things I Hate About You, Oh, with Josh Hartnett, West Side Story, uh, Romeo and Juliet, you know, movies like that. Because, <laughs> same. I just cannot get enough of Shakespeare's indecipherable English. Be or not to be wow, for sure, totally. Stories about women dying ridiculous deaths, and of course, most near and dear to my heart is the iambic pentameter that I have so missed since high school English class. But soft what light through yonder window breaks. Excellent. Like I said, <laughs> can't get enough. Which is why I'm so thrilled to finally be talking about today's flick, She's the Man. <gasps> the 2006 tween rom-com about a girl who dresses up as her brother and takes his place at a new school while he's away in order to play on the guy's soccer team. So this movie is actually based on the Shakespeare play called The Twelfth Night. Don't call him hither. And you can tell it's based on a Shakespeare play because the way it is. Be not afraid of great <laughs> Yeah, I'm just kidding. You actually can't tell at all if you didn't already know that it was based on Shakespeare because apart from a few names and plot points, that singular quote from Channing Tatum is all that remains of Billy Boy's original work. Story, sports, boob tape, more mustache stuff, headgear, masculinity, old man river, overacting, tampon nostril, kid stash, and Amanda Bynes before, you know, before. So put on your manly mustaches, get ready to cringe, and let's talk about She's the Man. But first, a word from our sponsors. Well guys, just when I thought Fly by Jing could not get any better, they went and released this holiday bundle. My bird's been eating it. Cause you're a bad, 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 bad girl. So if you've been living under a rock and you didn't already know, Fly by Jing is the best way to make restaurant quality Asian dishes at home. As you guys know, we've been using Fly by Jing sauces for a while. We love them here at our household. In fact, when I got this bundle, I had to tell Nick he wasn't allowed to eat all of it because he literally puts it on everything. Yeah. Yeah. So as you can see, they went all out with this set. So if you're wanting to try it or buy it for a friend, now is the time. She agrees. These sauces have transformed my cooking. I use them in everything. Last night I put the mala spice on top of my cucumbers. You can put it on popcorn. You can use it as a dry rub on meats. Literally put this stuff on anything. All of this you can put on anything. The zong sauce, again, we love on pot stickers, but it's good with dumplings, grilled meats, soft cheeses, whatever you can think of. Nick's personal favorite is the Sichuan chili crisp. He is not capable of eating ramen without this anymore. It's a savory, sort of crunchy hot sauce. Again, good on everything. Fried eggs, vegetables, meat, carbs. Last night, he put it on his vanilla ice cream. Just how I like it. Sweet and spicy. It is that good and that versatile. But my personal favorite that I've discovered with this set is the Fly by Jing Chili Crisp Vinaigrette. It's very similar to the Sichuan Chili Crisp, but it's got a little more zing. <laughs> a little more pizzazz, if you will. This set also comes with these dried chili peppers. These are actually my bird's favorite. I also got this spoon. <gasps> So if you're interested in trying Fly by Jing and stepping up your cooking game, you can shop their biggest sale ever, now up to 50% off at flybyjing.com. Honestly, get this, get the vinaigrette. You won't regret it, right? <gasps> Sorry. Thanks so much to Fly by Jing for sponsoring a portion of today's video and for all of these delicious snacks. And now back to the show. Fly by Jing, so good it'll make your friends spontaneously get up and do the gritty. Mm. <laughs> Okay, so Amanda Bynes plays the main character, Viola, who is a tomboy, soccer star, not like other girls, quirky, you get it. Yeah, baby. She's dating a 32-year-old high schooler named Justin. And they attend and play soccer at Cornwall High School. Remember that name. And one day Viola's team shows up for practice and they find out that the school cut the girls' soccer team. The school cut our team. Yeah, they dissolved the entire girls' soccer team and didn't tell them a single word about it until they were walking on the field dressed for practice. So Viola and the rest of the team tell the coach, like, look, we want to play soccer. Our team is gone, so we want to try out for the boys' team. At which he laughs and scoffs. <laughs> this can't be boys. It's as simple as that. A sentiment that is also echoed by all the guys on the guys' soccer team, including Justin, Viola's boyfriend. <laughs> I think the coach said it all. So because they disagree on whether or not girls are as strong and as fast as guys, 
Viola dumps him. End of relationship. Oh. <laughs> right then and there. So she heads home after school and runs into her brother's girlfriend, Monique. God, you and your brother look scary like from the back. <laughs> yeah, I hear that, Viola. You got a manly back. Sucks to suck. I'm looking for Sebastian. Where is he? Uh, you're at his house. <laughs> Just go inside, go upstairs, see what he's up to. Because it's your boyfriend. He lives there. Just a thought. Oh, she's leaving. 1 800 Biatch. I wish she had pelted her in the back with a soccer <laughs> ball. Just yeeted her. So Viola's twin brother, Sebastian, you know, the one Monique couldn't find a second ago at his own house? He's upstairs packing for a trip. A secret sneaky Audi trip to London. She thinks I'm staying at dad's, dad thinks I'm staying at mom's. He's going to London because his band scored a slot at some sort of music festival, which means he's gonna have to miss his first two weeks at his new high school, Lyria. It's actually pronounced Illyria because it's from the Shakespeare play. <laughs> Not the most common thing for two siblings to attend different high schools. Even less common for one of them to be starting at a new school after the year has already started. <laughs> but we're not here to split hairs. You just got kicked out of Cornwall for skipping. This is not exactly the way you want to start out. Oh yeah, that explains it. <laughs> I think I suddenly understand why characters over explain things in movies. Oh. It's for brainless peeps like me. <laughs> so Viola and Sebastian's extremely stupid mom character comes in and she makes a comment that sparks a super good idea. Sometimes I just think you just might as well be your brother. So Viola's like, you know, now that you mention it, I am a tomboy, not like other girls. I am quirky. I definitely don't want to go to that debutante ball and wear a soup's uggo dress. You know what? I think I'll go be a dude for a couple of weeks, namely my brother, Sebastian. If you can't join him, beat him. So she goes and asks her hairstylist friend, Paul, to help her turn into her brother. And at first he says no, because he had this weird brief lapse of his movie character dim-wittedness and he like accidentally thought logically for a second. Except for the voice and the mannerisms and the breasts and the mentality. But after some serious coercing, he agrees to do it. Come on, Paul. Okay. Which means we get a makeover montage. It's been a while. This is a great makeover montage. It's full of mustachery, soul patchery, goateery. <laughs> I just made that word up. All of them are a waste of time though because her brother doesn't have facial hair. But this is actually just dawning on me, but why on earth didn't they make Sebastian's character have facial hair? Because then Viola would have had to wear a hilarious mustache or beard in order to pass for him, which would have majorly concealed a lot of her soft sort of delicate feminine features. Trust me, it works. Sorry, Chris, you got boobs now. <laughs> which would have made this movie so much more believable because it would have made her as Sebastian more believable, right? But no, we are just forced to sit here and accept that every other character in this movie is a full-blown idiot and thinks this is Sebastian. Absolutely not. Should have stash. That's all I'm saying. The montage continues. She starts mimicking random men on the streets mannerisms. They wrap up her bobos. <laughs> So quirky. So she lies to her stupid mom. She says she's gonna go stay at her dad's for a couple weeks so that she can sneak over to Lyria High School Lyria. and pose as her brother. But what they never explain is what she told her actual high school, Cornwall. I guess Cornwall doesn't call the parents if their students don't show up for two weeks. <laughs> Plot hole. Anywho, so she gets to the new school as her brother and this is where we finally get to see Paul the hairstylist amazing transformative work. Oh my God, what is that? Oh my God, what is that? That's right kids, he put a wig on her and removed her makeup. Paul, my friend, you have a gift. Don't hide that under a bushel. Actually, you should start a YouTube channel where you transform your clients into other people. And if you don't get a ton of views, don't even worry about it. Just start eating massive quantities of food on camera and you'll get millions of views in no time and people won't even remember that you had a talent. So Viola heads into school to meet her roommates, but first she has to give herself some positive affirmations. I am a dude, I am a hunky dude, I'm a badass. Dude. I don't know about you guys, but that is the baddest hunky dude I've ever seen. So I hate to split hairs, but when she's walking down the dormitory hallway <laughs> to meet her roommates, I never realized how manly the shenanigans are in the background. The manly shenan- the shamanigans? <laughs> Every single guy in the background is just throwing a ball of some sort, like sport, sports, plural, sport ball, hockey stick. The director really just said, Hey, there's something manly. 
That's a big mood. So she meets her roommates, one of which is a young Channing Tatum, who we know and love from Step Up. <laughs> And Viola is immediately killing it as a guy. Hey! Hey! You must be my roommate. So her roommates don't question whether or not she's a girl, but let's be honest, it would be weird if they did, right? You don't just meet someone and be like, hey, nice to meet you. Are you sure you're a dude? Shh. But they do question her age. Seriously, how old are you? I can't blame them. Most high school freshman guys I know talk like a woman from Minnesota. Absolutely. Send her forward. You know it, bro. Like I said, killing it. Or at least she was for a second until tampons fell out of her bag. Okay, well, why do you have tampons in your boot? Channing. Yeah? I mean, Duke? It is 2006, okay? You can't just ask people why they have tampons. She plays it off. She tells them they're for her nosebleeds. It absorbs right up. Crisis averted. So she ends up making the guy's soccer team, but she makes second string, which she finds to be ridiculous. I mean, second string, come on, that's ridiculous. Am I right? Am I right? No! I don't believe you, Viola. Your stupid wig with sideburns and your Minnesota accent does not convince us viewers that you are Sebastian, okay? It should have been me. I should have been cast to play Viola. Hey, uh, did you guys know my dad works here? <laughs> <laughs> I know him. I made him cry once. What, that was you, bro? Absolutely. That's interesting. And why would that be interesting? Because I once made your mom cry when I dumped her, dude. Don't talk about her that way. Oh, what? Were you hoping I would be your daddy? Widow Duke wanted a widow bitty daddy to put him to bed in his widow jammies and change his widow poopy diaper. All right, guys, catch up with you later. <laughs> On that note, kids, it's time for a short ad break, and when we come back, a gross oatmeal fight. <laughs> Don't miss it. Booty on that Guys, I'm so sorry, but you're gonna have to click out of this video if you can't stand any more of Amanda Bynes' guy voice slash guy behavior, because it only gets worse. But please don't. Please stay. So this blonde with a booty's name is Olivia, and Duke happens to have a big crush on her, but she just got out of this terrible relationship and is heartbroken, which Viola can relate to. You realize it's all been a big lie. Every touch, every kiss. All right. Don't you dare. Don't you dare be distracted by that semi-cute and funny moment. The story is bogus. This would never happen. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So one night while having an incredibly violent soccer dream, <gasps> Viola wakes up to a torrential downpour of water to the face and she gets hazed by her teammates. They throw the grossest looking oatmeal I've ever seen all over them. <laughs> and then they like tell them all to get naked. But first, you must remove your clothes! But unfortunately for us, we don't get to see what happens because Viola goes and pulls the fire alarm. She always finds ways to avoid uh, undressing in front of dudes throughout the movie. And as a result, she hasn't showered since she's been at this school and therefore she smells. I smell so bad, I'm convulsing people. Wait, so you couldn't even shower off the gross oatmeal? A groat meal? Gross. That's not a big mood. So she calls up Paul. Hello, my life sucks. And she's like, hey, you gotta help me. Everyone thinks I'm a smelly dweeb. <laughs> That was my Amanda Bynes voice. <laughs> so he sets up this little sting operation at a pizza joint in order to make Viola look cool, I guess. He just hires a bunch of cute girls to basically throw themselves all over Viola. Hey, what's going on, Yvonne? Yay, Yvonne, what's going on? I'm a guy now, which means I have a weird accent suddenly <laughs> and no one notices. Monique just so happens to show up at the pizza joint at the exact same time, although she's completely unaware of this entire debacle. How convenient. She's just there looking for a boyfriend. I'm looking for my boyfriend, Sebastian Hastings. She still can't find him. Her literal boyfriend, whose phone number she has. <laughs> she can't find him anywhere. This helps Viola even further because Monique confuses Viola for Sebastian, obviously, and chases her down, begging for her or his attention. And then Viola dumps her on Sebastian's behalf. <laughs> I see you for what you truly are. Ugly. We're done. <laughs> So this whole ruse at this pizza joint turns Viola slash Sebastian into the big man on campus. She is basically now the man. You're officially my idol now, man. Okay guys, so you remember Olivia? You know, the blondie with the booty? Well, she gets paired up with Viola in Chem Lab, their lab partners, which makes Duke super jelly because remember he has a big crush on Olivia. So he gets like super aggressive with everybody after class. You go, go. 
Wow, Duke gets pretty aggressive over girls he likes. Like an unneutered male dog. Anyway, he makes this deal with Viola. He's like, bro, convince Olivia to like me. I guess he can't do that on his own. And I will help you with soccer, which Viola eagerly agrees to. And, um... <laughs> I'm sorry, but I have a qualm. Doesn't that defeat the entire argument you made in the beginning of the movie that boys are as good as girls at soccer? Girls aren't as fast as boys. Or strong, or as athletic. If you need a boy to help you get better at the sport, then you're not really making the stand that you think you're making, okay? It's just my opinion. Wow. Wow. So basically what you're saying is you hate women? <laughs> wow, I'm gonna post- Shut up, TikTok troll. She died. So there's another montage. There's a lot of there's a lot of filler stuff in this movie. Duke and Viola are working on soccer. Viola finally showers. Olivia starts to accidentally fall in love with Viola, who she thinks is Sebastian. Viola sees peens in the locker room. About me seeing your peen. There's dancing. <laughs> this was before Magic Mike. And step up, apparently. Raffle. Why did I write Raffle? And then Viola ends the montage by just kind of grinding on her soccer coach. Either oh. this bad man, your life. Teen comedy at its finest, kids. Oh, oh right. Ah! I can assure you that that would have hurt no matter what gender you are. Hey, kids, it's several days later, so I look less good. I just got back from Vegas, okay? Viva Las Vegas. So Viola actually gets Olivia to consider going out with Duke. I'll consider it. But Duke is super nervous because he doesn't know how to talk to girls. Channing Tatum, good looking, mm -hmm. big man on campus, sports guy, doesn't know how to talk to girls. And Viola is like, no worries, I will teach you. So they do this like role play thing to help Duke learn what women want to talk about. Ask me if I like cheese. Do you like cheese? I promise you this would work on me if I was single, 100%. Follow this advice. My favorite's Gouda. Then they get scared of a spider and they almost kiss. <laughs> I'm having a really Gouda time. So the next day there's a carnival. I can't remember what the carnival's for, but it doesn't matter. What matters is Sebastian and Viola both promised their mom that they would be there for some reason. So their mom is there. So in order to keep up the charade, Viola has to continue going back and forth, changing between being herself and being Sebastian. But some of the changes were literally for no reason. <laughs> like this one here, she changes on a ride and then just runs across the carnival into the bounce house and changes back. Thank you. What was that one for? Why? This poor kid had to sit there with your sideburns stuck to her face for no reason. <laughs> Where were you on that one, Andy Fickman? Where were you on that one, dipshit? So whilst at the carnival, Viola has to work the kissing booth, uh, cause her mom told her to. So she comes up to relieve Olivia, who I guess wasn't allowed to stop kissing this guy until her relief came. <laughs> He must have paid extra. Beware of the old guy chewing gum. Mm. It's not gum. Mm. Oh, ew, he's doing the old man nothing chew where they just like chew all day, but there's nothing there. That's gross and all, but I would actually rather kiss him than Ryan Cabrera's son over here. <laughs> I was actually talking about this guy, but way to go to my editor who had no idea and found another kid who looked like one of Ryan Cabrera's alternative looks. <gasps> Anywho, Duke was in line to kiss Olivia, but when Viola steps in, he's like, well, I already waited, I already paid for my ticket, yada, 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 so they kiss. <laughs> Wonder what that's gonna turn into. So Duke then confesses to Sebastian. <laughs> that he kissed his sister. He kissed his sister! But Viola is starting to develop feelings for Duke, which they really never developed. You never really see her starting to fall for him apart from one longing glance at him in the locker room. But anyway, she makes it super weird. You just you take her and then kiss her and then kiss the crap out of her. Okay. Gosh, I wish so bad that they had made her character be even slightly convincing. You know, like I would have been. I bet you six bucks I can walk around a whole day like this. Okay. <laughs> But seriously, I hate so bad how she always just clearly acts like herself and not her brother to the point where it makes Duke extremely uncomfortable. <laughs> um. And it just would never happen this way. You know, it's almost as if it's just a movie and probably shouldn't evoke so much emotion. Kind of like how a YouTube video where a YouTuber reviews a movie shouldn't evoke so much anger in the heart of the viewer if the YouTuber doesn't know all the actor's entire filmographies by heart. 
But hey, we're all human, okay? We all feel enraged about things that we shouldn't. I'm calling the police now! For example, right now, I'm really hoping that something super hurty is gonna happen to Duke. <laughs> yes! So Duke and Olivia end up going on this date, but Olivia wants Viola, who she thinks is Sebastian, to come and make it a double date because she really likes Sebastian and is just using Duke to make Sebastian <laughs> jelly. Does that make sense? You missed hands! Oh yeah, that's the token nerdy headgear girl, Eunice. <gasps> Wait, there's a lot of similarities between this movie and The Kissing Booth. There's Headgear Girl, uh, there's a kissing booth. Uh, there's like a sibling friend love triangle thing sort of happening. Um, those, are the, those are the only ones I can think of. <laughs> Forget it, I failed. Video's over. So, do you like cheese? Do you like cheese? No more cheese, Duke. It's enough. Okay, my colitis is flaring up just watching this. Cheese. 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 Cheese, 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 wrong you can be about a person <laughs> it's crazy so they get in a big fight it's actually pretty aggressive there's a lot of violence in this movie <laughs> Meanwhile, the Sketchball City kid, I can't even remember his name. Allow me to introduce myself. And he is plotting to expose Viola because somehow he knew something was off. I don't know how he knew. He finds out that Sebastian has a twin by looking at some old yearbook. Hastings twins couldn't be more opposite. Why in the world did they not just Photoshop an actual photo of Amanda Bynes and James Kirk as kids? I literally could do this in five minutes on Pick Monkey. Okay. So Sketchy Kid and Monique go to the principal with this information and it all comes to a head at the Cornwall soccer game and you won't believe the ending when we come back. Hey kids, we're back. So Viola, if you will remember, got kicked out of her room during her fight with Duke. So she has nowhere to stay. So she has to go sleep over at Eunice's. I've never had her roommate before. While well, the real Sebastian comes home and is none the wiser, so he goes to sleep in his own room. So he ends up getting drugged to the soccer game by his teammates the next morning, which he just goes along with and, and doesn't question, even though he literally doesn't play soccer. And as soon as he gets there, he gets his face painted with like the team color so nobody realizes that, you know, it's a different person. Honestly, I kind of liked that part and I thought it was clever. Anyway, he starts playing the soccer game because Viola overslept, you know, over at Eunice's. And he is ruining everything because again, he doesn't play soccer. But thankfully it gets stopped because the principal walks onto the field to expose Sebastian, but it's actually the real Sebastian this time. So it just gets super weird. Sebastian Hastings is a girl. Can you imagine this movie being made in 2022? You can't just assume someone's gender, let alone announce it to an entire stadium full of peeps. Andy Fickman would be straight up canceled. Who's canceled? Did, did you say canceled? No, I said spanceled, meaning a length of rope for hobbling an animal, most commonly a horse or a cow. I'm pretty sure you said someone was canceled and I want to know so that I can jump on the bandwagon and cancel them too. Don't take this away from me. You know how much I love to cancel people. She died again. Where were we? So Viola flags Sebastian down during the halftime. They switch clothes under the bleachers. Viola comes out onto the field, tries to play for a little bit, but then Duke and Justin get into a fight or they duke it out, if you will. You're gonna hit my fist in the face again. Which stops the game again for a second time. And this time she's like, you know what? I can't take this anymore. And also I love you. What do you, that's just a little weird. Uh, yeah, it is because she's only known you for two weeks and you've only hugged once. I've been pretending to be my brother. Huh? And Channing's like, yeah, just cause you wear a wig don't make you a girl. And Viola's like, oh yeah? Peep my bobos. Uh? Check out the bobos on Super Freak, am I right? <laughs> 
Is it just me or does this soccer game have more nudity than most? So then Channing Tatum gives a weird Shakespearean speech. Be not afraid of great. Some are born, some achieve great, some have great. Dude, can you can it with the Shakespearean weirdness? <laughs> We're trying to play a soccer game. <laughs> Peeps are flashing each other. Come on, you're kind of making it more weird. Long story long, they agree to let Viola finish out the game. She scores the winning goal against her ex-boyfriend who didn't think girls were as good as boys. You suck! Ah! Viola and Sebastian don't get in trouble for lying and deceiving everyone because of a spectacular soccer performance. Sound familiar? And then Viola and Duke end up to, oh, wait, nope, he's pouting. He's doing that pouty thing Channing Tatum does where he just like clenches his jaw a bunch of times. So you know he's mad. This is Channing Tatum for all of his movies. Yeah. Well, good news guys, that thing happens. You know, that thing in movies where one character is mad at the other character, but then nothing happens to make said mad character not mad anymore. But then they're miraculously not mad anymore. Yeah, that thing. Duke gets suddenly unmad at Viola. They work it out. Everything you told me when I was a guy just made me like you so much more as a girl. Not something you hear every day, but I'll take it. He escorts her to the debutante ball that her mom made her go to. They kiss in front of everybody on stage. And last but certainly not least, Eunice ends up with Toby. They grossly made out on the soccer field earlier. I just forgot to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! What a wild ride that was. <laughs> Couldn't find the budget, nothing new. Let's check out some reviews. I got really good ones for you. There was an astounding amount of one-star reviews. I thought it was gonna be one of those things where I didn't really like it, but everybody else did. But a lot of peeps didn't like it and saw it for what it was. This review comes from an IMDB user named Sana Tapur, and it is entitled, Don't See It. The head actress looked like a 12-year-old boy, and the fact that she used a wig and doesn't cut her hair is just scary. People have compared her to R. Witherspoon, which is a shame since where Legally Blonde was funny and witty, this movie like watching Harry Potter with Swedish voices, very bad. <laughs> what about this movie resembles Harry Potter? Here's one called Disgustingly Cringeworthy by Sakifmd. I found this movie kind of dumb. It was kind of cringe, bro. Viola is technically gay because she fell in love with a male while being a male. <laughs> I don't know think it means what you think it means. And of course we have to read a 10 star review because those are my actual fave. Here's one called, she is the man. You really get pulled into the story and become a part of it. Not like V for Vendetta when I looked around the theater and thought to myself, when will this get interesting? <laughs> yes, this movie is way better than V for Vendetta. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. Oh, Pony Boy 9. Well guys, that's it for me today. I gotta go dress up as a dude. <laughs> But like for real, I have to dress up as a dude to film the green screen scenes. Subscribe if you want, if you're into this type of thing. Join us over on Patreon to see all the behind the scenes footage of today's green screen scenes, extra vlogs, extra live streams, etc. We have a lot of fun over there. And I will catch you guys on the flip side. Don't be surprised if I don't just pop in unannounced. <gasps> That's double negative, double negative. Principal should know this. At first I thought Paul was just joining in on the mustachery fun, but then I realized this scene was actually shot on two different days because Paul keeps going back and forth between being clean shaven and having a full blown uh, little beard in the background. That's kind of weird, you got a little beard. That's kind of weird, you got a little beard. The trivia section on IMDb was full of fun facts about this movie. This one says, while Amanda Bynes was in boy form, the cast and crew were more comfortable hanging around her. They were more distant while she was herself. Why? Amanda Bynes in 2018 confirmed that performing this role led to her battle of depression because she didn't like how she looked as a boy. I'm not here to invalidate anyone's feelings, okay? But it would be like me saying I'm depressed because I don't like how I look as Chris Stapleton. You know, just don't dress like, don't dress like a boy. Don't dress like Chris Stapleton, right? What do I know? Why is Eunice stuffing tissues in her sleeve? Is this gonna be like another Rigoletto bread in the cup thing that 6,000 people explained to me and I'm the only one in the dark? Shut up, TikTok troll.